another drink, girl. You should know better than to let the mistress of the house run dry. Um, sorry, ma'am. I'm, I'm not here on house business. <laughs> not here on house business? And what other business would you need to concern yourself with? Yes, ma'am. My ex-husband will surely rest soundly in his grave, knowing that his wine collection rests safely in your charge. Well, he certainly never had trouble sleeping when he was with you. I hear he did little else. Please stop embarrassing yourself, Vivian. Not in front of the staff. Perhaps if you'd busied yourself with the gentleman at the club rather than watching my decanter, you might have caught yourself a husband of stature. Well, that's all your marriage to Papa was. A chance to climb the social ladder. One should never miss the chance for love and opportunity to intertwine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. I trust you are all aware of why we're here. Following Mr. Smythe's untimely death. My apologies, Mr. Whitaker. I trust in shortening your pleasantries, we may reach the desired conclusion without the inevitable ramblings. Excuse me, sir? Mr. Whitaker, I assure you, you have no business here. Victor, now, I know you and my former husband were close, but we must permit this man to do his job. Hmm. If there is a will to be read, then we must pay him heed. Mm. Which begs the question why you're here at all, my dear. You surrendered any claim to the Wildersmore estate when you left my husband for foreign shores. Regrettably, I admit, though the life of an international dressmaker does sometimes require certain sacrifices. It appears we have crossed purposes, my lady. I am not from council office. I'm from Scotland Yard. There's been a murder. <gasps> Most foul. And the best intelligence suggests the perpetrator is in this very room. Poppycock, sir. A most industrious and vigorous man than I ever met. What he lacked in compassion, he doubled in pedigree. I found his scent most intoxicating. He had a certain aura of distinguishedness that no man could ever replicate. Mr. Smythe was a kind man, sir. Very kind. I've worked here with him now for near on 16 years. I was 14 when I started working here, sir. My former husband had his faults, I'll admit. But he never had a bad word to say about the staff. And they never had a bad word to say about him. Lady Rosalind, you appear subdued. My father is recently deceased, Mr. Whitaker. You suggesting I find another reason for my wayward mind? How close were you with your father? My questioning of the housemaids suggests you enjoyed shooting pheasants of a weekend. Well, yes. It was well known my father enjoyed a good romp in the morning if the season was right. And have you easy access to the gun room? Your insinuation is wasted. Even an inept inspector could see that there were no bullet wounds on my father, so my shooting habits are immaterial. I am more interested in your access to the kitchen. You used to return with pheasants and game and such for Polly to place in the stew, no? Conjecture! I awoke to find my husband had suffered palpitations in his sleep, nothing more. For a lady of no medical background, and who was asleep when the moment occurred, you have managed a rather remarkable diagnosis. Lady, Vivian screamed for me. I saw my father lay sedate, his cup of cocoa still beside his bed, only half touched. I do beg your pardon, Lady Rosalind, but Mr. Smart didn't ask for a cup of cocoa from me that night. Although, I do recall now seeing a figure dressed in Lady Vivian's silk dressing gown in the kitchen in the early hours. A horde girl. 
I don't know what you imagine you saw, but I assure you, I should never concern myself with the workings of the lower floors. Too busy concerning oneself with the contents of Mr. Smythe's drinks cabinet, I should expect. Mr. Smythe's estate is vast and... Farther than the eye can see. Money has a gravitational pull for those who are pure and proper. I believe that money sticks to dignity, respect, and pedigree. That is why I shall have complete control of the estate. M.A.P. Were your mother alive to see you, she would have been so proud of you. The best pork chops in the country. M.A.P. Who does this letter refer to? This is Mr. Smythe's handwriting. But myself and Mr. Smythe had no children. And I fail to see how this M.A.P. could represent Rosalind. Had he another? You did have an insatiable appetite. Just seemingly not for you. Rosalind, if your father left no will, then this girl or this boy, this M.A.P., could stand to inherit your father's estate. Your pa couldn't have. He would never have done that. Not possible. Darling! Charles! Papa! My friend! M.A.P. My adorable Polly. Tis true! She has the family birthmark upon her thigh! This legacy is yours. 